I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful sight. Throne of Eldraine pre-release packs. Let's get into Kraken. These are looking marvelous. Beautiful artwork on this set. A lot of hype around it. We're going to find out what's all inside. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I am Joey Moss with Bad Boy Gaming, and we are going to get to Kraken Captain. Let's see what's inside. Our first pre-release kit. Uh, these are going for roughly, I want to say, what, 30 bucks a pop at your local game store, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, yeah, participate in a local event uh, or a local pre-release at uh, your local uh, game store. There you have it. Inside one of these, we get some packs, some stuff, and a seven. A one. Man, that was way off. Well, you can't always get what you want in life, guys. Going to find out what, oh, what, oh, what we all just have here. Uh, this is looking pretty nasty underneath here, though. We're going to put that aside. Let's see what we got. I'm cracking all four of these right now. I hope you guys are ready. Ooh, these packs are different. They did the packs different than uh, the, the base. That's right. They did these packs a little different than how they did the booster box. And if you haven't seen that opening, you are in for a real treat, my friend. Um, yeah, these don't even have the pull tabs on them. This is crazy. All right, so this is going to be our first pre-release kit. See what all we get inside of it. Uh, Deathless Knight to start things off as one of our uncommons. The Lock Dragon. And Mad Ratter. A uh, play on the Mad Hatter. What didn't you know? Isn't that guy like Hallucinate or something like that? The Mad Hatter. Ooh, Emery a Lurker. Beautiful, baby. Beautiful. For some reason, my camera's not picking up. That's a gold symbol right there. I don't know why it's not showing it, but that is a gold mana symbol. It's another great card right here. Um, it's going to see play all over the place, my friends. All over the place. Keep an eye out for that one. Food token. Got the spoils, spoils of war. Oh, this is so cool. This is so, so cool. Pre-release pack, I should say. They're not even pre-release kits anymore. They changed the name to pre-release packs. I guess someone was offended. I don't know. Curious Path. So much flavor in this set. Lost Legion. Paladin. It's definitely of oh, the Witch's Cottage. Man, fairy tales. Hand them up, guys. This is a real, real treat. I'm so excited for this set to drop. And uh, tell me where you're playing. Where are you guys playing for your pre-release? I'd love to hear about it. And also, why does this come out? Uh, why can you play on Arena before you can actually play on a, play a pre-release in a game store? Ho, ho, ho! Now we Getting the old Royal Sciads. This is looking like one of those nasty pre-release kits. Oh, and a mantle of tides to go with it. There you go, yeah. This, these would combo nicely, I'm sure, in a little pre-release event with Emery. Wow, we would definitely be going Is It so far from what I'm seeing in this uh, in this opening. But yeah, how come you can play on Arena before you can play... Um, before you can play... Uh, yeah, at your pre-release event in 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 the re in the flesh. That's a real good question. I'd love to know about why are uh, why is online getting uh you know taking uh taking the, the threshold taking I don't know taking charge whatever the word is I don't know I'm 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 I just woke up. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a fantastic whatever day it is. Bone Crusher Giant Man is it? We would have crushed it with is it for sure, for sure. That you could tell that's gold though. Huh, how about that? That Emery just looks kind of weird. Anyway, Bone Crusher Giant it is. Oh, that is sweet sauce right there. Garen Brig Carver in the foilness. Uh, ex uh, not extended art, but uh, that extra border. They really did a bang up job of this art. You just you can't you can't put it past them, man. They 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 really really hit a home run. I love this mouse token. If only that was a rat, man. If only that was a rat. So we're off to two. Two foils already. Two foils in this pack. True Love's Kiss. What's going on there? Wishful Merfolk. The Memory Theft. Uh, Fell the Pheasant. There you go. Rack. Oh, if only it was a rack. Who remembers the rack from back in the day? Sorcerer's Broom. Very interesting. Sage of Falls. Arcanus Owl. And Yorvo, Lord of Garenbreg. Huge dude, but man, what do you do with them? You know, you really got to do something with those counters, if anything, or give them trample, you know, uh, for sure. Not, uh, no table required, MTG Arena. Yeah, no table required, and you can play before these people play. That, I just, I don't find right, and I, now, don't get me wrong, I make a lot of Magic the Gathering Arena videos, and I love Magic the Gathering Arena, but I just don't think it's right that, I mean, paper players have been playing a lot longer 
than people on MTG Arena, you know, and uh, they're they're getting the uh, they're getting shafted, man. You know, they're not allowed to play. Uh, you know, I don't know uh, as soon as these guys are, uh, as soon as Arena is. Castle Vanthris, wow, it, this this would have been just stupid sauce for uh, any is it player, man. Archon of Absolution, four drop. There you go. Got the protection from white and a whole bunch of nasty sauce with it. Uh, not allowing your creatures, uh, your opponents or creatures to attack. Okay. We are on to the last pack to crack. Here we are. Who remembers when they used to do booster packs for pre-release kits? Um, there's the magical cow. And you would end up getting uh, like four booster packs of one set and two booster packs of another set. Who remembers when I did that? And would you like them to go back to that is another question. Could they even go back to that at this point? Feasting Troll King. First time I saw him. There you go. Look at that behemoth. Got the Vigilance to Trample when Feasting Troll King enters a battlefield. If you cast it from your hand, create three food tokens. Sacrifice three food tokens. Turn Festering Troll King from your graveyard to the battlefield. Access ability only during your turn. Really cool. Foil Swamp. And that's going to close out this one. Garrick, are we going to pull you today, my friend? I'm really hoping so, because you are uh, you are uh, you are hot sauce, man. What do we got here? The Midnight Clock Foil in all of its glory. Anything on the back? Nope, that's all you get, my friend. You just get the one card this time. That is different. Um, before, they were giving you two cards. Now you just get the one. So they're changing things up a little bit. I, I like opening these packs... Um, so, you know, everyone can get an idea of what what they're going to get in their pre-release kits and packs and whatnot. So, if you guys uh, just want to take a moment, hit that like button. It does help out. Oh, my God. You already saw it. Wow. The foil murderous rider promo in the flesh. My friends, it doesn't get much better than that in the rare slot. That is sweet. That's a hot commodity, man. That is Planeswalker and Creature Removal as well, as well, my friends, um, as, a, as a creature. That's, that's nutty. That is nutty, buddy. Eight. Twelve. Man, I was way off. All right, here we go. Back at it again. What are we going to crack? What are we going to crack? What are you hoping to pull? What are you guys hoping to pull? Um, I already pulled what I was hoping for. And then some in the in the booster box opening, which was really lucky. Um, but yeah, if there's one card you could pull out of this entire set, you know, or you're a, or a card you're exciting to synergize and play with, you know, what are, what are they? Frog and Fight is cool. Now they're Emery. I've gotten her in every single pack. I'm not complaining at all. She's a good card. She really is. The spell costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. When Emery Lurker of the Lock enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Here's the kicker. Tap it. Choose target artifact card in your graveyard. And you may cast this that card this turn. That's a little silly, man. That really is a little silly there. There's the mouse again. Very powerful abilities on these cards. And uh, do not underestimate the power of, um, what do you call it? Um, the adventure right here. The adventure is is just nasty. What you can do with that adventure. Forever young. Oh, takes me back. Takes me back. Uh, yeah, the adventures are very powerful. Tournament grounds. Welcome in the house on a day. Drown. Burning yard trainer and gilded goose. Finally showing its marvelous face. There you have it. Uh, when guild it has flying. It's basically like a birds of paradise. When guild, uh, gilded goose enters the battlefield, create a food token. If it's an artifact with, two, uh, if it's an artifact with two, oh, I'm sorry, it's an artifact with two tap. Sacrifices artifact, you gain three life, and then for deuce, create a food token, and then tap it. Sacrifice a food, add one mana of any color. Pretty neat. Oh, <laughs> get out of here! Somebody stop me! Oh man, we are on fire with these openings. I swear, we are just on fire. Oh man. Yeah, hair's red. It's probably on fire. That's a good point there, Bill. Uh, there we go. Nice gilded goose. Woo, baby. Wow. We, woo. All right, all right, all right. Man, wow. It just, it just feels good to crack packs. I, I love opening booster packs. I really do, especially when a set first drops. It's just so much excitement. It really, really is. I hope um, I'm not going too fast for you guys. I can't go over every single comment and whatnot. I mean, I figured I'd slow play it a little bit sometimes so you guys can get a good feel, especially for those of you who did not decide to watch any of my spoiler videos. Um, yeah, or any of my MTG Arena deck tech videos you know, on this. 
Ember the Shield Breaker. Uh, Kenrith's Transformation, but I'm not going to read over every single common and uncommon. We just don't have time. I'm sorry. Lock Dragon, the old Loke Dragon. That's Loke, man. He's Loco. Happily Ever After. A lot of hype around this card, too. Very interesting. A three drop uh, win con here. Um, enchantment. When Happily Ever After enters a battlefield, each player gains five life and draws a card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are five colors among permanents you control, there are six or more card types among permanents you control, and there are cards in your graveyard, and your life total is greater than or equal to the starting life total, you win the game. Do not play this in your pre-release kit, okay? If you get this card, do not play it. I, I, I for sure, oh, that is gorgeous. I, I, I assure you, my friends, you will, you will do nothing with this card. Okay, um, you can gain that five life and draw a card. If that's what you're using it for, that's fine. Other than that, the card, you're not going to win a game with it. I'm sure on Arena, I'll build a deck and we'll win a game with it, you know. But it's going to be against someone who just started playing Magic. There's no way. Fling is back. Oh, my gosh. There's just no way that you're going to be able to pull that off, like, consistently, is my argument. I mean... People were saying maybe in Commander and EDH. No, that's an absurd win con. It is only three, though. I guess if you want to gain five life and draw a car, it's not bad. Even with that Angel, it would probably go nice with that. Um, but I wouldn't be trying to actually win the game with the card. Venerable Knight and Piper of the Swarm. Haven't seen you, my friend. The rats you control have menace. Produce, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token. And then for four sacrifice three rats, gain control of target creature. I feel like it should have been multicolor. Like blue and red, you know, or blue and green. I'm, I'm blue. Can we talk blue and black? I feel shining armor. There you go. That is shining. That is actually pretty shiny. Get a load of that. Ah, oh, beautiful. This guy. This guy. Ooh, what is that glare in front of him? It's like an orb, like in front of him. Like, like I don't know if they meant to do that. That's pretty cool though. All right, we did pull another foil. Foils are lit in this in this whole set, man. Foils are just lit. Lithosaurus, man. Shining armor. I don't know. That's funny. They keep following each other. Lash. Rose Thorn. Halberd. Uh, enters the battlefield. Attach it to target non-human creature you control. That's pretty good. So you can just attach it. Or, I mean, if, but if it's this, if it's unattached, you got to pay five, which is pretty crazy. It was very interesting on 9-11. I, uh, I don't want to bring up a sore topic, but Wizards of the Coast, and this could just be coincidence, you know, whatever, they released this card. Uh, I'm not sure what to make of all that. I'm just throwing it out there, though. Um, I thought that was a little little strange, you know. Could just be coincidence, though. I'm sure that's what it was. I don't think they intended to actually do that. Shine Chaser. There you have it. Our kind of absolution. Red Cap Melee, which is vengeance. Creature of the, of, uh, creatures of the creature type of your choice get minus three, minus three until end of turn. It just sounds funny. It just, it, just, it, just, it just rolls off the tongue kind of funny. Very cool card, though. Goodbye, Tribal. We'll see ya. Tribal is a thing of the past. That just ended Tribal. Just like Tron's been ended. The same way Tron's been ended, you know? Oh, my gosh. No, Tron, Tron's not over, guys. Queen of Ice. She is really cool to look at. That in foil would be nice. Ooh, Crystal Slipper. Almost forgot you were in this, because we've been going through the commons so quickly. Tempting Witch. And then uh, Insatiable Appetite. I'll slow play this one. I'm so glad this card is back because you guys know I love my Thud decks. And now we got Fling. We certainly do. Ooh, I'm going to be busy this week just building, brewing decks, getting crazy. What are you guys playing in the, on Arena if you're playing Arena? If you're playing in paper? Just I got to hear about it, man. I might want to steal your deck. Don't steal. Castle Vantress. There we have it. Castle Van these, these, uh, these, uh, these lands are really good. And people, I think, are just out of their minds that they're not giving them cr enough credit. You guys are going to find out, man. You guys are going to find out. It's basically like a basic land, in a sense, but with a perk. I mean, what more do you want? For real. What more do you want out of one of those, you know? Okay. What more do you want? We got the... Uh... Oh, by the way, there's what these look like. I'll show you really quick. He gets one of these. High King Kenrith. On the reverse side, teaches you how to play. For anyone wondering what was inside one of those. Alrighty, we are on to our almost last pack of here. There we go. Almost last kit. Hey! Whoa, I think we cut into that a little too much. There's no way the knife went through that. There's just no way the knife went through that. Get out of here. There's no way. 
Maybe I did. Hmm. Silver Flame Squire up in here. Oh, wait, we got to roll the die. Eight. Twelve. Man, that's way off. We got twelve last time. What's going on here? All right, Golden Egg. Deafening Silence. Amazing card. Each player can't cast more than one non-creature spell each turn. Sideboard. Modern. Good game. Um, Alona. The Discerning. Very cool. Our kind of absolution and Hushbringer. Love this card's art. Get a load of those lips. Unbelievable, my friend. Unbelievable. Great sideboard card. Flying, lifelink creatures on the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. Depending on the meta, could be a main board. Mmm, beloved princess. Hello. Uh, lifelink, beloved princess can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. So just pump and dump. There you go. There you have it. Maybe. No, that's probably never going to work out the way you want it to. <laughs> I wouldn't build around that strategy if I was you, Bob. I'm just throwing it out there. Queen of Ice on top again. Crystal Slipper. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Curious Pair, Flame, Flutter, Witch, Rider, Henge, Walker. Mystical Dispute. The Modern War Commander. Pretty cool. He's got Death Touch. Heraldic Banner. That alone would make it... If you get two of these in your pre-release kit, you're probably going to win the game. I'm just throwing it out there. Doom Foretold. I don't think this card is going to do a whole lot in standard, but, you know, we're going to find out. Uh, beginning of each player's up. Keep that player's sacrifices non-land token permanent. If that player can't discard a card, they, or they discard a card, lose two life. You draw a card, you gain two life. You create a 2-2 two -two white knight creature token of vigilance, then you sacrifice Doom Foretold. I don't see it doing a heck ton. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. It's, again, one of those bulk rares. I'm pretty certain. I might be wrong, but I doubt it. All right, we got Witch and Well. Hopefully we can get another nasty little pool here because we haven't really done a whole lot um, in this kit. Rally of the Throne. Welcome. Um, we got Billy and the small, um, the small Apple. Who remembers Billy and the Small Apple growing up? That was pretty cool, huh? Uh, all that glitters, and you're our first of Lockthwain. The old three drop, uh, first of Lockthwain, or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control. Each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. Sacrifice another black creature, draw a card. In a mono black build, I can see that working some fun. Goat token. Goat lives matter, guys. That's right, that's right. All right, we got three packs to crack here. Hopefully they are juiced up and good to go. We have a Mantle of Tides, getting to the good stuff. Corridor, Monitor. All right, there we go. Emberth Shieldbreaker. Man, the alternate art version of that is really amazing. Joust, another cool card. Another cool card. Beanstalk Giant. There we go. There's some alternate art for you. Really neat there. Witch's Vengeance. Pulled you yet again. Yet again. Creatures of the, uh, creatures of the creature type of your choice Get minus three, minus three until end of turn. It's funny it doesn't say creatures of the chosen type. Why can't it just say that or something like that? There's a fairy token for you. Pretty neat. They should have just said something like that. No idea, my friends. No idea. Our, our mythic slot has been Dudley. Um, we have really not pulled any good mythics. Um, did we pull any mythics at all? I don't. Oh, yeah, we did, we did pull the one mythic. That's right. We did pull one. Gilded Goose. Can't get enough gooses. I almost have a place out of these already. That is ridiculous. Gilded Goose, and a Steel Gaze Griffin in all of its foil beauty. There you have it. Pretty neat. And moving on, we got uh, the old uh, the old on an adventure. That's right. The old on an adventure. All right, let's see what we got in the last pack here. Maybe something good. Ooh, that card's art is pretty cool. Reaper of Night. You know, when the channel was first around, Reaper, uh, I, I used Death yeah, as uh, one of the channel icons. The channel image way back in the day when it was called MTG Schism Report. Boom! There we go. Cauldron of Eternity. Finally got our mythic here. The spell costs two less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. Remember, a creature you control dies. Put it on the bottom of its owner's library for three. Pay two life. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate its ability only because it's broken and this card is stupid amazing. Well, that's pretty good, I guess. I like the flavor text on that at the end there. And what do we get here? Boom! Sorcerer's Spyglass. There you have it. We got the Sorcerer's Spyglass promo. Pretty neat. All right, we are down to one kit and one kit only. What a what will be in store. I wish you guys all the best of luck at your pre-release event. Um, give your 
um, your LGS a shout out in the comments if you'd like. Let everyone know where you're going to be playing and how excited you are about this. I know I am truly excited, my friends. We are going to slide this over here. Don't know what that is. And we got some stuff here. Seven. Seven. Five. Dang it. We're getting closer, though, my friends. We're getting closer. This is true. We are getting closer. All right. Here we go. Here we go. The last pack to crack is Joey Moss back. What would this last kit just be on fire? Watch. Watch this last kit. It's just bonkers here. Ginger Brute. Welcome, my friend. Mystical Dispute. There you have it. Shamblin' Suit. A Joust and Fires of Invention. Very cool card. Um, but it's a little bit downside. You can cast spells only during your turn. And you can cast no more than two spells each turn. Uh, you may cast spells with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control without paying their mana cost. Kind of neat, but that also makes it so you cannot ramp up. You have to use, like, routes and stuff. You know, like, uh, circuitous routes. You just get, you know, a ton of lands out or something like that. You know what I'm saying. Just keep getting more lands out. Uh, but then you're mixing gruel colors. And do you really want to go that big with gruel? I don't know if you want to do that. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, gruel actually does get pretty big. All right. We got weapon rack. Ooh. Weapon rack has a battlefield with three pulse and pulse counters on it. Move a pulse and pulse counter uh, from weapon rack onto target creature. Activates ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. Well, that's kind of neat. That's a little neat. A little fun combat trick there. Revenge of Ravens. There you have it. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life. Wow. Uh, that's a neat card. Uh, a little steep for four, but still pretty neat. Kenrith Transformation. Cauldron's Gift. And there he is. Torbren, Thane of Redfell. Really cool card. If a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or permanent and opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. Can't wait to brew around that card. Food token, hand him up. All right, we are down to four packs. Four packs to crack. What shall it be? Queen of Ice, welcome again. I think we pulled about eight Queen of Ices in this opening. <laughs> I believe so. Follow me your knight with the death touch. You draw a card and you lose one life for three. And then you drop a 1-1 one, one death touch for one. Savvy Hunter, pretty cool. Sacrifice two foods, draw a card, not two shams. Fairy Vandal, flash and flying. Oh boy, the flash and flying is going to get so annoying this standard. Believe me, believe me. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a puzzle puzzle counter on Fairy Vandal. Stolen by the Fae. There you have it. Return target creature with converted mana cost X to its owner's hand. You create X11 one, one blue fairy creature tokens with flying. Oh boy, and I love the art on that dwarf token. That dwarf token is pretty sensational. All right. Seven Dwarves. That's another really cool card if you haven't seen this yet. Seven Dwarves gets plus one, plus one for each other creature named Seven Dwarves you control. A deck can have up to seven cards named Seven Dwarves. Very, very interesting card there. Battle of the Pheasants. Um, yeah, tomorrow we should be doing, or maybe even later tonight, we'll be opening the Collector Booster Box. So stay tuned for that. Oh, wow. Haven't seen that one yet. That is really neat. Get a load of that. Animating fairy in all of its glory. Beautiful. Red Cat Believe. And another Yara. First of Loxwain. All right. We definitely did good pulling her today. I'll tell you that much. Two packs to crack. Two packs to crack. Hopefully they are bringing us the good wins. Let's get some good wins in this standard, uh, standard event here. Here we go. Giant Opportunity. Ranger. Brawl Bourbon Champion! Yeah! Wanted you. Haven't pulled you yet. There we go. It's a one drop. Creature Human Knight. First strike haste. Whenever Fervent Champion attacks, another target attacking knight you control gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Equip abilities you activate that target Fervent Champion costs three less to activate. There you have it. Got the island and the human. Last pack. What oh what are we gonna get in the last? All right, fingers crossed. Let's go, guys. Something big. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much. Uh, it would mean a lot if you leave a like, uh, and also, you know, like, give me a comment. Let me, like, let me, let me hear from you. You know, Look, we got Bill in the in the small apple here. Uh, Bill in the small apple wants to hear from you. Into the story, witch's oven, and 
it? Wild Born Preserver. Not too bad. Going out pretty deece there. Uh, flash and Reach. Whenever another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. When you do, put X puzzle puzzle counters on Wild Born Preserver. All right. Not too bad of an opening. And, ooh, Old Sworn Knight in all of its foliage. Decent promos, I would have to say. Appreciate you guys tuning in. And make sure you keep coming back. Uh, if not subscribed, by all means, go ahead and do that. Skadoosh.